Post parameters are a handy dandy little thing. They allow you to create a few keyframes, oftentimes only two, and the game will automatically interpolate all the poses in between of those two keyframes. You can have post parameters that blend between simple pose to poses, or posing between entirely different sequences. For example, the idle animation for Left 4 Dead weapons blends between standing still idle and running animations. In this guide I will show you how to add a simple pose parameter that goes from one still pose to another. Although the setup is exactly the same for when you want to blend between fully animated stuff. I'm going to assume that by the time you are learning pose parameters you should already know the basics of modeling, animating and QC editing. Because I will not give you a crash course on the basics of Blender or the Source Engine. I am only going to teach you post parameters and nothing else to keep this video as short as possible. For this you will need Blender and Notepad++. We will specifically be using Notepad++ because we are going to use macros that only Notepad++ can read. Let's get started. In Blender you will need a model that already has the moving bits rigged and ready to be posed. There are two ways to go about setting up post parameters. Option 1. Make one animation where every movable bone moves at once. Like in this example the wheels, truck bed and steering all move in the same 5 frames. Option 2 would be making multiple separate animations for each thing, which would only really be useful if you want to blend between full animations. But there are two things you gotta keep in mind. Bones are not allowed to rotate more than 180 degrees in one frame, else it'll simply rotate the other way around. So instead of rotating 270 degrees clockwise, it'll actually rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. If you want a bone to rotate more than 180 degrees, you should skip a few frames ahead and then rotate the bone. And two, every animation that should be looping, like wheels that spin, make sure the interpolation mode in the keyframes is set to linear. With the default baser interpolation, all the bone rotation seems to speed up and slow down, which is probably not what you want. Now, with those things out of the way, create one or more animations posing the things you want. You can either create one single animation with just 5 or so keyframes, like in this example, or you can make something like this speedometer. Later on in the QC, it'll be taken apart and turned into a post parameter that goes through this entire sequence. Either ways, export the animation with whatever name you want. The first thing we will have to do is making the bone merge and waitlist lines. Bone merge simply makes the compiler not delete any bones that are not rigged. In this example, the steering bones aren't rigged to any mesh, but they are required. Without bone merge, these steering bones will simply be deleted. The waitlist command tells the compiler to only use a few of the bones for this animation. If you remember, in my animation every single bone moves in the same 5 frames. Waitlists therefore will help me separate out only those bones I want. Both bone merge and waitlists can be done with macros in Notepad++, so you do not have to write out all the lines all the times for every model. In the description is a link to a GitHub page where you can copy both macros. Open the link and copy this path up here into your file explorer. This will open the shortcuts file. If you are not on Windows, you will have to figure out where your operating system stores this shortcuts file. 
Copy the entire macro from the GitHub page right below where your shortcut file says Macros. Save the file and restart Notepad. Now that the macros are installed, we can keep on going. Open your model's SMD file in Notepad. It must be SMD, not DMX. Copy those lines on the top that mention your bone names into a new document. First, run the bone merge macro and copy the bone merge lines into your QC. Then go back to this separate file, undo the macro and run the waitlists macro. Copy this set of lines into your QC file as well. Now you have a waitlist that ignores all the bones. To make the animation use the bone, change the zero behind the bone name to one. Anytime a bone has a weight of zero, all of its children also have a weight of zero and will therefore be ignored. If a bone has a weight of one, all of its children will also have a weight of one and will be used. Copy this waitlist block as many times as you want post parameters. I have three post parameters, so I will use three waitlist blocks. Change the name of each waitlist, which currently are a string of X's, to whatever those post parameters you want to use are called. Now you can edit the bone weights. Set the number behind a bone to 1 if you want to use that bone in the post parameter of the same name. With the waitlists out of the way, you can now set the definition for the post parameters themselves. If you check the video description, you can find a second GitHub link to an example QC file. It contains a working post parameter setup. You can copy all of the post parameters, animations and sequences into your QC file as a prefab. We will then go through all the code one line after another. First, we have the post parameter. These define the name of the post parameter and how they are set up. The first post parameter is one that rotates a bone, or a set of bones, 360 degrees and can loop. You can use this for any post parameter that loops back on itself, like rotating wheels or propellers. The second post parameter only has a 0 and a 1. This is for post parameters that only have two stages like the bed on this truck that is either up or down. The third post parameter only has a minus one and a one. This is for post parameters where your setup uses negative, neutral and positive, such as steering where the frame zero is turning left, frame one is neutral and frame two is turning to the right. Pick what type of post parameter you want and then change the name to the one that you had used on the waitlist. Delete the post parameters that you do not need. Now come the animation lines, which define every frame of your post parameter or every entire animation. First, you need the A underscore idle animation. This animation simply uses the model SMD for the anim. If you have more than one model, pick any of these SMD files. We need this idle animation because all other animations will be subtracted from this one, which makes animation blending possible. More about that later. In case your idle animation is an actual animation you made, such as the idle of a view model gun, you should use that one instead of the model. The model SMD is only useful as idle if the root bone of your model is not posed, like this truck where the body itself never moves, but the parts do. Next, you have a set of animations that all have the same name, except that the number at the end is different. 
As you can see, all of them also use the same animation file. The command frame over here tells each and every animation to only use one specific frame. You have to make one of these lines for each and every frame you made in Blender, then make the frames command use a single one of those frames. Next is the waitlist command. As you already know, it tells this animation to only use the bones you set up previously. The following command, subtract a idle zero, make this animation be subtracted from the a idle sequence using frame number zero as a reference point. This enables animation blending. The reason we blend animations together is because we want multiple animations to modify the same bones. For example, a player model can breathe and still be able to look up and down. Both breathing and looking are separate animations. Down here we have one animation that does not use the frame command. Instead, it uses FPS 5. This animation is being played like any other regular animation, but at 5 frames per second. You can pick any FPS you want. If you do not specify FPS, it defaults to 30. And that's pretty much it for the animations. To reiterate, create one animation line for every single frame you have for this specific post parameter. Or if you have entire animations, only one animation line for this entire animation. Then subtract the animation. And that's it. Moving on to the sequences. Again, we will start with the idle sequence. It is as simple as sequence idle a idle. This tells us that the sequence name is idle and it uses the predefined animation by the name of a idle. And now we finally build the post parameter telling the game which frame happens when. The name of the sequence doesn't matter and is up to you. Behind the sequence name, you will need to list the animations you previously set up in the order you want them to appear in for the post parameter. In my case here, steering left, neutral and right in this order is steer 0, steer 1 and steer 2. If you want, you could add these curly brackets. But these are also irrelevant. All they do is help me read the QC file so that I can see what actually are the sequence and what are the animation names. Behind the listed animations is the blend with command. All it does is tell us how many animations are listed to the left, because sometimes the compiler just can't figure it out on its own. Next is the blend command. What it does is define which post parameter this sequence is supposed to be. You can simply copy the post parameter name and the two numbers behind it down here. I wish I could tell you why in here it is called blend and not post parameter, but I will not question Gabe as I prefer having a pulse. Following that we have the delta command. Delta is required if you used subtract. These two commands go hand in hand. If you use subtract, you must use delta. If you do not use subtract, you must not use delta. Behind that we have the autoplay command. Autoplay makes the game consider the animation to run at all times. Post parameter sequences just need to have this. The last command, hidden, is optional. All it does is hide the sequence in Half-Life Model Viewer to make the list of sequences appear nicer. And that's pretty much it. You can compile your model now and look at it either in HLMV or in the game. If the model appears on its side and only moves into place once the post parameter is active, then you probably did not use the subtract command properly. 
Should you need help with this, I suggest joining the Dead for Mods Discord server and ask in the modding channel. But please do not join and immediately send me a DM because I will ignore you. I also have my own private server which isn't as active and is mostly about shooting the shit. But if you want to see what I do sometimes, that would also be a neat place to be. If you liked this video, there's a button specifically for that. If you would like to suggest a topic for a future guide, feel free to write that in the comment section below. I also have some text-only guides on Steam, which you can check out if you want to see what else I got. That is all for today, and goodbye.